Hey people, welcome to The Run Test. It's Kieran here. In the latest video in partnership with Precision Fuel and Hydration, we're going to be taking to the trails and looking at two of the brand new big hitting grow to trail shoes to see which of these, the Hoka Tecton X with its carbon plate or the Hoka Speed Goat 5, a classic that we've all loved the past generations of, which of these is going to be best suited to your runs. So watch on. Now, before we get into the business of comparing these two shoes, one word, when I'm out on the trails doing kind of long runs, one of the things, I'm often out there for maybe six hours or longer, one of the things that definitely happens to me deeper into those races is I get tired mentally, you know, the fog can hit, and it's at those points really when you haven't got a bit of clarity, you know, some things can start to go wrong, not least you start to sort of run sort of a little bit slacker, but you know, you need to be concentrating on where you're putting your feet and what you're doing. And how often, if I can, if I'm somewhere where I can stop for a black Americano with a bit of honey, that's kind of one of my choices. I like to do that, it sort of works for me because I get a bit of water in as well with it, but often that's not the case. So if you're deep between aid stations or you're just lost on the trail somewhere, you need an alternative to get some caffeine in. And now Precision Fuel and Hydration have launched this. It's a very, very pocket friendly gel with 30 grams of carbs, but 100 milligrams of caffeine for a little pep. It's perfect for have one of these pop in your pocket, take it with you when you get those kind of low moments or you just need something to return the focus a little bit. Now when it comes to taking caffeine gels, I tend to take them sort of 20 or 30 minutes before I want the effect to kick in because that's kind of how long experience tells me it takes for the caffeine to take an effect on me. But I look for the signs that I might be needing. That one surefire sign is that I'm getting a bit grumpy. The other thing that I will do is I tend to take my gels a little bit sparingly. Uh, basically, I just don't want to dull the impact, but also I know personally that if I have too many of them too frequently, I go a bit stir crazy and also it can do funny things to my tummy. So yeah, I tend to use them at specific times when I need them most. So it's worth experimenting yourself with those. And if you want to have an experiment, head over to Precision Fuel and Hydration. These gels have just gone on sale now. We'll drop a link in the caption below, along with a discount code where you can get some money off on buying those to take out onto the trails. But for now, back to the shoe review. I'm gonna tell you which of these shoes you want on your feet for those long, long days in the trails. So first up, let's get into some quick details then. Well, the Hoka Speedgoat 5 weigh in at 291 grams or 10.2 ounces in a UK men's size eight and a half. While the Hoka Tecton X come in at 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces in a UK men's size eight and a half. The Speedgoat has a four mil drop, whereas the Tecton X comes in with a slightly higher five mil drop. On price, the Speedgoat is the cheapest. It's gonna come in at 130 pounds or $145 in the US. The Hoka Tecton X is a chunk more expensive. That's coming in at 175 pounds or 200 of your finest US dollars. So let's get into a quick shoe whip round and tell you basically what is similar and what's different about these shoes. Now, let's start with the midsole. That's probably the biggie here. With the Hoka Tecton X, you're getting a carbon plate. You are not getting a carbon plate in the Speedgoat 5. In the Hoka Tecton X, you have got a late stage Meta Rocker. In the Hoka Speedgoat 5, you've got an early stage Meta Rocker. So two differences there. You're also gonna get different midsole foams here. So in the Hoka Tecton X, you've got Pro X Fly foam. In the Hoka Speedgoat 5, you have a single density EVA compound in there. We'll get into how those run differently a little bit later in the review, but there is a big difference there. So once you flip them over, in terms of those outsoles, you are getting Vibram Mega Grip on both of these. You have got different grip patterns here. The lugs are different shapes. They're also different depths. You've got five mil lugs on the Speedgoat 5. You've got slightly shallower four mil lugs on the Hoka Tecton X. And I guess, you know, that's maybe there to sort of, you know, you're taking a little bit of kind of fast moving off the terrain over the overall grip, which is kind of what the Tecton is for, is for kind of moving you quicker over those. And I guess really the Tecton X, that means it might be a little bit better when you're going to go from tarmac to trail. Maybe those roads, is not so much grip. When it comes to the uppers, very similar here. You've got dual layer jacquard mesh on both of them. If anything, I would say that the Tecton X feels a little bit more coated. Uh, the Speedgoat 5 is a bit, a little bit softer, a little bit more flexible than you're finding on the Tecton X. And I guess, again, maybe that's just because you want a little bit of softer comfort over kind of longer miles if you're gonna go longer in the Speedgoat 5, which is kind of, I think, what, what Hoka is aiming at here. It's, you know, it's not that discernible on the foot, but there is a bit of a difference. In terms of the tongues, there's a lot of similarity here. You're getting very thin tongues. Both of them have sort of like a half gusset there that stitches in. They both kind of wrap the top of the foot quite nicely. When you come up into the heel construction, you've got a little bit more of a sort of high flick back tab on the Hoka Speedgoat 5 to help to pull them on, but that sort of sits away from the Achilles a little more. And I think again, you know, going up hills, that can help, but you've got a more kind of straight up sort of traditional heel, heel kind of collar tab here. 
on the Tecton X. This one on the Speedgoat 5 actually I think sort of sits a little bit sort of narrower. It kind of comes to almost like a point here and wraps the heel a little bit more than you get on the Hoka Tecton X. Not a huge amount of difference. And in terms of overall kind of padding in the heel collar, these have very sort of similar feel. In fact, all the way up around the collar, that's a very similar feel on the foot. The other thing I will note on both of these shoes, you've got a little bit of kind of, it's almost like it feels like neoprene kind of stretch in here. This is a bit more neoprene on the Hoka Speedgoat 5. And I think that kind of gives a little bit of flex in the shoe in and around the top of the toe box. You've got a similar kind of design here with this sort of shape cut out but that's a different material. It doesn't feel quite as kind of stretchy as you'll find on the Speedgoat 5. So a little bit of difference there as well. On both of them, you've also got a slight kind of toe bumper here for a little bit of protection. It's not it's kind of too pronounced, um, sort of basically similar. You're not too much difference between the two of them on there as well. So a quick word on the fit then. Well, I ran in a UK eight and a half, which is my size, and I would be recommending running true to size in these shoes. There's a wide version of the Speedgoat 5 if you've got particularly kind of wide feet. I have got quite high and quite wide feet, but I found these to be fine. They both kind of had held well, no slipping, got good lockdown, just enough room in the toe box. The one thing I will say is overall, when I ran with these kind of in comparison, I think that the Hoka Speedgoat 5 just have a little bit more of a kind of straight out of the box, kind of comfort fit, disappearing fit on the foot. The Hoka Tecton X didn't quite feel as entirely kind of natural and comfort as that. So I prefer the fit and the feel on foot of the Speedgoat 5, but it's by narrow margins. So the run test then, well, I have run north of 50 miles, probably closing in on 100 miles in each of these shoes. I've done some interesting tests where I've done road to trail. So kind of many miles on sort of tarmac leading into sort of compacted forest paths where I run. I haven't done anything particularly kind of steep and technical in these shoes because that's not the kind of conditions that I can find easily where I run, but I am on kind of compacted gravel paths, some sort of slightly kind of steeper, some slippier sort of muddy stuff where it's been a bit wet at times. Um, the other interesting thing I did is I took these two shoes out and I ran the uh, best part of a kind of three hour run test where I swapped the shoes over very close to each other with another two sets of shoes just to see how they compared a little bit more directly um, across that kind of run in the trails. Now on that test I went from the Speedgoat first into the Tecton X and the, the difference is kind of pronounced actually. You know the Speedgoat I think is as kind of Hoka describe it, it's sort of like a classic kind of workhorse easy rolling shoe that kind of eats up those compacted paths and trails with kind of really nice comfort on the foot. I feel like there's good hold. I, I feel like underfoot the ride is a little bit kind of more direct. I definitely get the benefit of that rocker. And I can slip into rolling easy, easy miles over long distances in the Speedgoat 5 with no trouble at all. In fact, this was one shoe that I'm going to go and run 2,000 miles in 70 days along the Danube, leaving in about a week. Um, and I've been trying to choose the shoes that I'm going to wear. And the Speedgoat 5 were up there on the list. They were up there on the list as well because they're pretty good at that kind of crossover between road and trail. They, they sort of handle those bits where you might be running through villages as much as going off road as well. Now, then I flipped into the Tecton X and immediately you kind of feel the difference in that foam and you can feel the sort of slightly kind of more sort of punchy ride. I think from the, from the difference in that kind of midsole construction or working together. The one thing I will say is on the foot, I don't feel like they feel quite as kind of natural and comfortable overall. It took me a little while to kind of get my feet into a comfortable position for running in them when I swapped immediately. You know, these Hoka Speedgoat 5s has a really disappearing feel. The Hoka Tecton X, not quite as disappearing. You are sort of still slightly aware of them on the foot, but you know, I'm kind of splitting hairs here a little bit. But one thing I will say is that the Hoka Tecton X do feel faster. They do feel like they're giving you a little bit of extra push in each of your kind of steps forward. And I think my sort of way of thinking about how these shoes might break down is really for longer, slower miles where you might be out kind of for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10, longer hours, maybe I think the natural ride and the more direct kind of um, ground contact feel, you know, at least comparatively of the Hoka Speedgoat 5 would be my choice. When you get on the carbon plate and that midsole construction of the Tecton X, you do feel it, but I'm just not sure yet whether or not I'd want to sort of push that into, you know, hour seven or eight of a big long ultra on those trails. I did consider the Hoka Tecton X as well as a shoe that I would take out to the Danube to run that river, you know, mainly maybe because maybe I'd get those kind of efficiency gains. I'm only gonna be running kind of a marathon distance of four or five hours at a time. 
And I think it's up there. I think it is, you know, you're going to get extra. I think it's going to help you, you know, cover ground with kind of getting less tired legs without feeling overcooked. I don't think they've overbaked that kind of feel of the foam in the carbon plate. I think it does still feel quite good. You get a rolling feel quite natural. Overall comfort around the back and the heel collars on these, I would say is pretty much on a par. You know, they were both really comfortable. They both held the heel nice and tight. I had no slipping. Again, lace lockdown, all of those things I thought was basically on a par. There's not a huge amount to choose between them. The only thing I will say, the sort of caveat to that is I didn't really get to test them on anything very, very steep. You know, in those steep downhills where your feet can sort of start to slip a bit more, it's a bit more of a test of shoes like this as to whether or not you get the proper lace lockdown hold and whether the heels maybe do anything. You know, if in doubt, I think this kind of, this sort of pushing away of the, um, the heel kind of flick here does make a bit of a difference. Um, you know, there, it does kind of keep away from that kind of potential Achilles rub. I didn't get rubbing from this, but you are, you know, is there sort of sat there. I guess the other difference here, I think when you get back onto the tarmac again, or if you're running on kind of really sort of compacted ground that's quite hard, you know, we're breaking into the summer here and things are gonna be pretty firm, hopefully if the rain stays away. The Tecton X definitely gives you a lot more. They are very, very nice on the road. You know, they're up there with some of the road shoes that I've run in, in that sense, really comfortable. You're gonna get the five mil lug grip, extra millimeter of kind of lug depth on the Hoka Speedgoat 5. In the runs that I did, I didn't really find that made too much of a difference either on the tarmac or on the trails. You know, they neither of them felt kind of more grippy than the other on the, on the tarmac. And on the trails, you know, again, I was running mainly kind of dry conditions when I hit the mud. I didn't really notice too much of a difference. So for me personally, on the conditions that I ran, I wouldn't necessarily be making a buying decision based on just that extra bit of lug depth. Durability wise, Again, I, I'm not sure, you know, I, I feel like they're both going to do a similar job here. You know, if I had to call it over kind of longer duration, putting in sort of five or 600 miles in a pair of these, my instinct might be that the uh, the Speedgoat 5 might last a little bit longer. But so far, durability wise, they both kind of held up on a par with the miles that I've done. They both feel like good, durable shoes to me. So my verdict then on this battle between the Hoka Speedgoat 5 and the Hoka Tecton X, it's a bit of an interesting one because I've really enjoyed both of these shoes. I think they're both excellent shoes. I think they both could do a job and it just depends really for me on how far you're gonna run really maybe and, and kind of potentially on that kind of difference in the terrain. The value as well is a big key here. So you're paying much less for the Hoka Speedgoat 5 and I think you're not getting a huge amount of difference into the Hoka Tecton X in terms of that overall kind of you know, bump up. So I just don't know whether it's worth paying the extra 40 pounds for the Hoka Tecton X, unless you're gonna be doing something that's a bit more kind of short and sharp and you really, really know that you wanna get a bit, bit of extra pace. I think the Speedgoat 5 do an ample job just fine. So if I really had to call it, if it was my money to spend and I was going all out, I think overall for the sort of all round package, my first choice would be the Hoka Speedgoat 5 for that kind of all round versatility. If I was really, really going on the margins of looking for a bit of extra performance, I felt like some of the runs I had was going to be a little bit more on road and I wanted to do a little bit shorter and a little bit faster, a little bit racier perhaps than I think that I would probably go for the Hoka Tecton X. So there you have it. That's been my head to head of the Hoka Speedgoat 5 and the carbon plated Hoka Tecton X. If you have any questions about these shoes, feel free to hit us up in the comments below. We'll endeavor to answer that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Share the channel with friends. It really helps support us and helps us make more videos like this. Hope you've enjoyed it and we will look forward to seeing you again soon on the Run Testers.